Let me talk now a little bit about the stress invariants. Uh, I told you that there should be some combinations of the stresses, of the component of the stresses in a certain, in, in, in different possible uh, uh, system of coordinates, that in spite that these components change when we change the Cartesian system of coordinates, a certain combination should be constant disregard what is this system of coordinates. They are called invariants. And there are, in principle, three invariants. Of course, any uh, combination of invariants is invariant, though. If something, for instance, if this doesn't change when changing the system of coordinates, and this doesn't change when we change the system of coordinates, the sum of them doesn't change. And the multiplication of them doesn't change. And the square root of them doesn't change. Okay? But in principle, there are three, which are called the invariants I of the stress tensor. Look, the invariants are numbers, which depends on the stress tensor. The point is that disregard the system of coordinates for this stress tensor, they don't change. Because otherwise, they contradict the principle that this equation, the Cartesian equation, provide unique solutions for the, for the principal stresses. Okay? So, what are those? Look, we could, we could do that yourself. If you are curious, just develop this de determinant. Look, what coefficient is multiplying to lambda 2? And we will say that this coefficient is necessarily the trace of the stress tensor. Okay? So here, 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 there is a sigma 1 by sim, sim, sigma uh, 1, 1 plus sigma 2, 2 plus sigma 3, 3. Okay? What is I2? Look, it can be proven that I2 is written in that dead. One half of the, you see, it's the first time we see this, this guy, right? Remember I told you the double, the double product, the double dot product of the tensor, which is summing every component, time itself, so square, and summing them up. So this is sum sigma 1, 1 square, plus sigma 1, 2 square, plus sigma 2, 1 square, since sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, plus, plus two, two, 2 times sigma 1, 2 squares, plus 2 times sigma 1, 3 square, plus sigma 2, 2 squares, plus 2 times sigma 2, 3 squares, plus sigma 3, 3 squares. That is this guy. Okay? This, this result doesn't change. Ah, minus, sorry, minus I1 squared, which is sigma 1, 1, plus sigma 2, plus sigma 3, 3 squared. This result, if you change the system of coordinates, doesn't change. Okay? It's an invariant. By the way, how is this result in the case that we work specifically in the principal directions? Well, sigma times sigma is sigma 1 squared plus sigma 2 squares plus sigma 3 squared, right? Maybe you, you don't see that so, so clear. But look, s s this term, so no, back here, uh, this one. The sigma times sigma, when I work in the, in the principal directions, is this time squared, sigma 1 squares, plus sigma 2 squares, plus sigma 3 squared, right? And then trace of sigma is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3. So if I compute that, it turns out this, this, the value of this invariant in terms of the principal stresses. And what is the third invariant? is the determinant of sigma. So the determinant of sigma, which in that case would be the determinant of that, but in the case of the principal stresses, what is the determinant of this? You know? Sigma 1 times sigma 2 times sigma 3. That's the determinant. So that determinant, that determinant, the product, okay, the determinant of sigma is, uh, is, is, is invariant. Okay? As I told you, <coughs> any combinations of these invariants, which are the original invariants, but which are more uh, appropriate for some purposes, are also invariants. So if I take, this gives rise to the invariants which are called J invariants. 
The J invariant one is equal to I1, so the trace. J2 is I1 squared plus 2E2, so that is the expression, a little simplified. And J3 is the combination of the three I invariants and this. So this invariant G, there are J, there are three of them, they are also invariants and they, they can be computed in that way. Okay? And this is an expression, a, a, a normalized expression of the three invariants. Okay, we'll talk about that frequently. We'll talk about variance A, but essentially we'll talk about invariant J. As I told you, they are useful because if I can say about the, the stress state something, and this something be independent of the system of coordinates, for instance, I say, this state state has an invariant one, 23. And then you, so you show that into, into a, a meeting, and then I said, well, but in what system of coordinates are you computing that? You say, it doesn't matter because it's invariant. Okay? If I talk about, if I say, the component 1, 2, or 1, 2 plus 2, 3 of the stress state is 44. And the guy said, what is the system of coordinates of that? Say, well, you are right. If I change the system of coordinates, that would be different. But not in the case of invariant. Okay? And that's what they are useful for. And look, <coughs> of course, <coughs> in the same way that they comp can compute the invariance A <coughs> and the invariance J of as, as the, stress, as test, the stress tensor, I can compute also the invariance I and the invariance J of the deviatoric part of the stress tensor. Okay? And look, the first one, according to that, will be the trace of the deviatoric part of the stress tensor. By, by the way, it can be proven that any deviatoric stress tensor, by construction, you can just check it. That's, I think that this is one of the problems that you have uh, in the book. If the deviatoric stress tensor is defined in that way, the trace of that would be the trace of that minus the trace of that. But the trace of that is sigma m, and the trace of that is sigma m, so the difference is zero. So the, trans, the trace of any deviatoric uh, tensor is zero by construction. So that means that the first, the first uh, invariant i of any deviatoric part of a stress tensor is zero. And then these are the expressions for the second and the third deviatoric i. Prime means here that we are computing the invariance of a tensor which is the deviatoric part of the original tensor, okay? And then we can also compute the G prime and uh, in, uh, the uh, invariance for the deviatoric stress tensor and then can be expressed in that way. 